Hi guys, my name's Mitchell Kennedy and welcome back to Red Belly Media. I know it's been a while since my last video, about four years to be exact, but let's pick up right where we left off with facial motion capture. Now switch to Blender for all things 3D because it's free, open source, and so much easier to learn. Facial motion capture can be divided into three stages. The first, recording the actor's performance. Second, tracking the footage. And last but not least, applying that data to shape keys within Blender. To better understand what the dots are actually used for, Picture them as sliders along the X and Y axes that give you a numerical value based on its position. We then use that information to drive shape keys within Blender. When recording your actor's performance, I recommend starting each take with a neutral expression on the actor's face so that the tracking markers are located in their resting position. I also close my eyes for a brief moment and then open them to signal each take is beginning. Next, you need to track the dots positions within the footage, which can be done in either Blender or After Effects. Within Blender, you open a motion tracking workspace, import your footage, control click on all of the markers and track forward. If any tracks fail, first select all of the good tracks and press control L to lock them in place to avoid accidentally editing them and then go back to the last well-tracked frame, adjust the search area slightly in scale and continue tracking. Once all of the tracks are complete, click reconstruction, link empties to track. Now all of your track dots appear as empties in relation to the camera. Next, import your footage as a plane and connect it to the front of the camera using a copy location constraint and a copy rotation constraint. Go into the camera's view by pressing zero on the numpad, click on the image plane and press GZZ to move the footage along the camera's local Z axis until it fills the frame of the camera view. Reset the camera's location and rotation by pressing Alt-G and Alt-R and then move the camera up on the Z-axis until the bottom is just above the ground. This ensures that we're only dealing with the X and Y values of the dots and not the Z-axis. At this stage, it's best to rename all of the empties to correspond with their locations. Next, go into the shape keys of your 3D model. Select one that you wish to control with the mocap data. In this case, I'll select the eyebrow. Right click on the value and select Add Driver. Under the Object tab, select the corresponding track marker, change it to a Y location and local space. This driver setup becomes the link between the track marker's movement data and the shape key's value slider. To go back into the driver's editor at any time, right click on the value slider and click edit driver or click open drivers editor to open it up in another window. We need to calculate the relative difference of the track marker dots movement from start to finish. Go to a frame where the track marker is at its starting position and take note of the driver value. Now go to a frame where the track marker is at its most extreme distance of travel and take note of the driver value again. If we take these two driver values and subtract the smaller value from the larger one, we get the relative difference. Now we need to look at the shape key's minimum and maximum values to determine the relative difference of the shape key's value slider. Once again, subtract the smaller number from the larger to get the difference. Most of the time, the minimum and maximum values are 0 and 1, so the difference will usually be 1. But if your minimum and maximum values are different, just remember to calculate the difference. 
Okay, so now that we have the track marker difference and shape key difference, we need to use this information to make the track dot start and finish driver values 0 and 1. To do this, we take the shape key difference and divide it by the track marker difference. We then go into the driver editor once more and in the expression tab, we multiply the variable by the calculated value. Now all we have to do is scrub back to the track dot starting point and subtract the number shown in the driver value from the rest of our expression. The driver value should now start around 0 and finish at around 1. Now when you set up the driver for the shape key on the other side of the face, you should be able to copy and paste the expression to the new driver and it should work properly. If it's slightly off, just mess with the subtracted number at the end of the expression to get it just right. Now you can repeat this process to assign drivers to all of the shape keys that you need. And that's basically the entire process of facial animation with motion capture. If you like this video, please consider subscribing for more short films and filmmaking tutorials. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. And it won't be four years, I promise.